Ryan Dempsey. Good to see you, bro. Nice to see you, buddy. Um, thanks for being here, man. No problem. Thanks for having me. Much appreciated. Um, I've known you for a little while. A little while now. A little while. <laughs> <laughs> it's been um, probably two years now, eh? Something yeah. like that. We, uh, we coached football together, I think. Or well, you I, 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 I played. I played. You when coached. I, yeah. And then we just kind of drank together for a while, which, yeah, is, yeah. which was always good shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we were around football a lot together. Um, and you coach as well. Um, but, yeah, man, thanks for coming on. Um, I don't really know your story. But let's dive into it. <laughs> yeah, let's let's dive let's dive right in. So, um I've been around the mental health issues pretty much my whole life. Not just with me, it it kind of runs in in my family. Uh, you know, <laughs> God love her, my poor my poor mother has suffered from, you know, huge anxiety issues and depression for the better part of her her whole life. And she's She's unbelievable. My mother is is absolutely, absolutely, unequivocally unbelievable. She pushes through it like I've never seen anyone, and she probably shouldn't sometimes, but like she's she's crazy. My grandmother's the same way on my mother's side. They've both, you know, my grandmother's been been hospitalized for it. Uh, my mother hasn't, but it's it's pretty obvious. Uh, but you know, that's just to show after so many years they're they're doing fine. Like my mom's, my mom's doing great. My grandmother's doing great now. And that's the, that's the two people I keep looking to, to go like, that's, that's my end game. Yeah. That's, that's my end game. You know, like it doesn't matter what I'm going through right now because you know, they did it and they did it in, you know, not necessarily worse or better, but they did it in, in circumstances that I don't think I would have been able to do. You know what I mean? And again, not necessarily better, or worse, just different. But um, as for, you know, I don't know as much about their story because they've, I just kind of noticed them working through things where obviously I know what I went through. Yeah. Um, so uh, I guess where, where things like really started, like I, I had a really good, I had a really good home life. Like my parents are great. I've got a brother, I've got a sister. They're great. You know, I've got, I have a sweet family. Um I went to, you know, I, I lived in Riverview, New Brunswick, great little community. Everyone knows everyone's business, so that's hard sometimes. But, you know, that that's what you get with with small towns. But, you yeah, know, we, I, I, had, I had a really good... We wouldn't know anything about that here in PEI. Oh, no, yeah, right. Yeah, I went, I went, <laughs> I went from small, small, small town, New Brunswick, to small province. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But... Um, Smallest but the best, bro. You're right, but I love it here. It's a great um, place, for sure. Yeah. But... Um, like I, every, everything was, I was, I was spoiled in my life for, yeah. for a number, a number of years. And, um, like, you know, I, I played, played hockey, played football, played soccer, tried basketball, not good at that. Can't jump. And I'm sh- <laughs> can't jump and I'm short, man. <laughs> hard, hard knocks, you know, but, um, like everything that was in my life was like really good. And then I, I can't even pinpoint a time. I can't point, pinpoint an age, but I started to like just kind of feel weird, which like that doesn't make sense to a lot of people. But I think probably early middle school. I'd have that's probably when you know I started to develop as a human being, first of all, and. I, I started having a little harder time. Like I'd always go, I used to always go out with the boys down the street and play street hockey all the time, seven days a week, two to three hours a day. Like that's what we did. And then I'd start missing them. Hey man, you feeling all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm full. I'm cool. I just, I'm tired. I don't want to, I don't want to go out today. I wasn't tired. Like I was fine. I just, just didn't want to go out, which was odd, but you know, I just, my mom would ask me every once in a while, Hey, like, why aren't you going out? The kids are playing like in front of our house. And I'm, I don't know. I just am tired. I don't want to. And my mother have gone through some of those things, kind of noticed and tried to push me to get out a little bit more. Right. But again, I, I was a kid, grade six, seven, whatever it was. I didn't, I didn't know that. Didn't know what you're going through. I, I, I didn't, I didn't know that was my issue and yeah. everything in my life was so great. 
Yeah. Like it, it, it's not like, you know, um, I hear so many people's stories and I always want to know which, which is why I love your podcast. Which, you know, I want to know other people's stories and, um, you, you can never really pinpoint events of when this stuff starts. Sometimes it just happens. Sometimes it's, you know, a long growing event, but looking back on it now, like the, there was nothing, there was nothing wrong, which kind of, which actually made things worse later. But, um, anyways, because you kind of like think, why am I well, feeling this yeah, way? There's that's, nothing wrong. That's, that's it. Right. Like, you know, you, you look back and you go like, why am to, to, to put it in the words of what I was thinking in my head is what, like, why, why do I feel like such a piece of shit? Mm-hmm. I, I, I have a great life. I've got, you know, I've got, I've got great family. I've got great friends. I've got sports to rely on. I've got great coaches. I've got, you know, my, my extended family, my grandparents, they try to come down and see us every time they could. I've got family and I've got all this great, phenomenal, phenomenal stuff. And I feel like a piece of crap mm-hmm. and it doesn't make any sense. I don't know yeah. why it, doesn't make sense and um i really started to notice what i was going through um it would have been grade nine in the fall i uh i was told to come out and try out for the varsity football team a couple of my coaches from from the year before were like man like you need you need to be out you need to be out playing you don't need varsity you need you know you need you don't need jv you need varsity so I went out and so my, that's high school for anyone that doesn't know. So it'd be like going yeah, up from grade yeah, nine. yeah. Sorry, yeah. So it it it'd be like your you know eight, seven and eight would be like your pee wee ages. Your junior varsity would normally be your nine and ten, and then your eleven and twelve would be your your high school football where you're actually associated with the school and not um, a city a city program. Um, I don't know if that helps anyone, but. Um, we don't got football football here. Well, well, you, you guys used like, to football like you, you do over to. there. Yeah, and not in the schools it's, anyway. It's, it's a little different. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyways, uh, in grade nine, I went out and I tried for the varsity team. Yeah, and I was I was super cocky. I was a cocky kid because I was great at hockey. I was great at soccer, and I was great at football. And that's all I knew. That's all I knew was my sports. I knew yeah. my I knew my sports. And I knew if, you know, anyone messed with my friends, they had to answer it to me. And and that was kind of the deal. I was just kind of that guy. Yeah. Which I was totally cool with. Yeah. <laughs> and um I was totally cool with that. No one no one messed with a lot of with a lot of my friends. And yeah, uh or the, me. You're the enforcer, eh? Oh yeah. The goon. Oh man, they <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you mentioned that. Uh they there was a there was a hockey father, uh, Greg Daly, and he nicknamed me in grade like seven. He nicknamed me Moose. 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 And I'm like, who that? Why? Like, why is that? He's like, because there used to be an enforcer in the NHL, and that's all he did was fight and hit people. Like, that's Moose. it. And like, I, I wasn't much of a fighter in hockey, but like, that that's what I did. Hockey, I was an enforcer in in soccer. Soccer, I, w- I was an enforcer. Football, I hit things and hit things and hit things. I didn't know anything about football. I knew I was faster than people. I knew I could hit harder than people. That's that's what I knew. And in my real life, everyday activity, I was I was the enforcer. No one no one messed with me. So anyways, I get I got into grade nine, like to the to try out for the high school team. And I looked around and I was kinda like, I'm not an enforcer anymore. I am hundred and twenty pounds soaking wet, <laughs> five foot six, like I am not an enforcer here. And tryouts went really bad really bad i was really really distraught yeah and small fish in a big pond oh man it was brutal (laughs) oh man and they put they didn't they didn't spare my life they put me up against the biggest guys day one i went in i'm like i'm a linebacker no you're not but you can stay here and learn what it's like to be one and i got clean (laughs) get out there linebacker (laughs) yeah get out there little guy yeah yeah anyways (laughs) brutal like I, I looked like a twig yeah. amongst trees. Like it was anyway. So that, that finished up. Obviously I didn't make the team. They told me, you know, go, go play, go play for the, the city team yeah. for a year or two. And we'll see you again. And I'd never really been told that before. Yeah. So I kind of, you know, and I'll, I'll 
very readily admit it today. I, I thought I was better than I was and I was a little cocky and, and that kind of thing. But like that hit me. I'm like, wow, like I'm not as good as I thought I was. Holy crap. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's humbling. So grade nine year, I kind of in my head, I had a hard time coping with, I can't just walk onto a field or a rink or, or, you know, somewhere and just be the toughest guy. Mm-hmm. I've got to, I've got to really, you know, work, work, yeah. which was a total anomaly to me at the time because just naturally through, you know, all the, the extracurriculars I'd been doing, I'd built up enough muscle mass and enough agility and speed to do what I was doing. I didn't have to hit the weight room. I didn't have to do all these things that I have to do now. So that like that hit me hard. I'm like, wow, like I suck. <laughs> I suck, man. So I went through. I think that's good. So not to cut you off. No, I think no, that's a good thing to learn though. Um, from just from an athlete's perspective, um, something I learned too. I went through the same thing. <laughs> thought I was the shit. shit, and then I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't at all. Went to Holland College. Yeah, it like, sucks. Like, it sucks, nah, doesn't dude. it? No, nah, <laughs> this, this ain't. Uh, yeah. This ain't PEI high school football. This is. Uh, this is college, but. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a, something that athletes like have to go through. It's good to go through, like just to realize you have to work hard. And you're not just going to be good just because you're born with some talent or oh yeah, natural. I was gifts. I, looking back on it now, I mean, like if I if I didn't learn that lesson, I would be a total dick. <laughs> like and I would be the worst kind of person. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you can see that, and I'm, I'm sure you have too. Whenever you coach, because we both spend a lot of time coaching. You can see that in some kids. Oh, yeah. And then even like, you know, they make it to the college level with still with that attitude. Um, but then, you, you know, yeah. you, everyone learns eventually, I think. Well, like I've I've seen tons. I've seen tons of kids go off to, you know, college and university programs and just totally spiral out of control because they never had to work. They just, you know, showed up. Yeah. And I, I was super happy. Like I'm looking back on it now, super happy that I learned that lesson, but I didn't deal with it in the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Mentally. Mm-hmm. Like I just kind of, I shut down for a while. Mm-hmm. I was just like, what do you mean? I've got to work. Yeah. Which, which was hard for me. Yeah. And then, uh, I finally learned it. And for probably, probably three months, I was in the best place I've ever been. Uh, you know, I was, I, I, I wasn't going to the gym, but like I was, I was working out in my backyard. I was, I was trying really hard to, you know, make sure that not only was I athletic, but like, how do I learn how to play football better? How do I learn how to play hockey better? How do I become a football or hockey player instead of just some athlete on the field, some kid that, that can run like, mm-hmm. congratulations, you can run good. Mm-hmm. And for about three months. I was, I was just elated because I had all this stuff that, you know, I was, I was working towards and all this stuff. And that kind of kept my mind occupied on, you know, how do I get better? 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 And, um, then grade 10, I decided I'm, I'm good enough to go play for the high school football team. But not only am I, do I think I'm good enough? but I think I'm smart enough now to realize how I have to approach this. I can't just walk in day one and go, I'm, I'm the best. Give me a roster spot because I'm Ryan Dempsey. I've got to go and I've got to earn, I've got to work for it and I'm not going to start, but that's okay because I'm going to learn. I'm going to get better. And when my friends are learning in grade 11 that they've got to work for something, I'm going to be three steps ahead. I'm going to be, I'm going to be there. And I ended up starting the second game of the season and got cleaned by a blindside block guy came in, just cleaned me and I had a massive concussion and I have, I've had more than my fair share, most from hockey, but I've had more than my fair share of, of concussions to the point where I had to take a full year off sports. I couldn't, I couldn't run. I couldn't go to the gym. I couldn't like the steps, my feet hitting the concrete was enough to potentially give me another concussion. I couldn't do anything. I was, I was stuck on the couch. 
and your your steps hitting the concrete was enough yeah, to get you in the yeah. I, 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 I would roll over in the middle of the night some nights and like my bed was against the wall. So like if I rolled over my head hit the wall, I'd have to wake up because my head hurt. Like it it was it was so bad that I think it was like a two or three days after my, my last concussion, uh, my mother had to come check on me for like a co- every couple of hours. So like it was bad. Like it was uh, Mitchell Osmond. We went to uh, went to high school together. It's a friend of ours for those listening. Um, he walked me to my classes the next week because I couldn't remember. I, I had, like I, you know, I, I I wanted to go to school because why I don't know actually but <laughs> I was set on going to school and Mitch would like walk me to my classes because I just I felt like I was in constant haze like I just I just wasn't all there anyways the the doctors told me you know you're you're done you're you're, you're done hockey you're done soccer this year you're done, you're done everything you're and you know my parents were, were pretty you know you're done football event obviously I got back into it later but you know like for a full full 12 months I I did actually it was long would have been longer than that I I did get in back into hockey the year after but it took a little over two years for me to get back into football so I missed my grade 10 and grade 11 year playing football I only played in grade 12 so that messed me up that totally totally messed me up couldn't go to the gym I gained weight obviously can't work out um you know I can't play I'm watching my friends play hockey, football, soccer, and I, I can't. I'm just, I'm stuck. I can't, I can't go for a run. I can't go outside and shoot a puck at the net. Like, I, I can't do anything. And I mean, like, it wasn't a full year of, of no jogging or anything. But by the time I got to the point of, okay, I'm allowed to go and exercise and go back to the gym, I didn't want to. I didn't like, I didn't like leaving the house. I didn't like people looking at me. Like it was just, it was totally, 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 totally defeating, totally defeating. And when I lost my ability to play sports, I kind of lost my enforcer role. That, that thing that I envisioned myself as for so many years, I just kind of, kind of evaporated in front of me. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't, I didn't get to do all the things that I thought Ryan Dempsey should do. And, and that hit me really hard. And thank God I had the great friends that I did because, you know, like I, uh, I may not have been able to do that stuff, but I'd go hang out with the guys. We'd play video games and stuff and we'd do that. And that, you know, that kept me in a fairly, fairly decent place on the outside, but in the inside for probably the better part of those two years, like I was just, I was just dying. Like I didn't know what to do with myself. I, I couldn't couldn't do anything. I was I was so distraught and so angry at everything. Like God love my parents for putting up with me <laughs> because like we'd have arguments all the time over stupid simple little things that to most people would would just not be a problem. But I was so stuck in my own head that I couldn't comprehend what my parents were trying. They were just trying to help. You know, my, my dad was trying to tell me like, Hey, go out and and join clubs at school. And he'd ask me every like two days, did you join a club? 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 And I'd always look at him like you moron. I'm not joining a club. Like I'm, I'm a football player. Like I don't need to go join some friggin' club. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. And I, what he was trying to do, he was just trying to get me out of the house and get me back into things that I'd enjoy. And, and I mean, I, again, I don't know how God, God loved both of them because I, I didn't know that's what they were doing. I was so stuck and so stagnant in my own head that I just, I couldn't see that. And my friends were trying to do the same thing. I don't think they knew, but they kind of had a hunch, you know, they, they kind of saw that things were a little different and, and they were trying, but like, I just, I just wasn't interested. I wasn't interested in anything. And when I finally got cleared to like, and convinced my parents to let me play football again, uh, I played my grade 12 year, but like that almost killed me more. 
I was out of shape. I couldn't play any of the positions that I knew and that I was, you know, half decent at. I, you know, I got hurt all the time because I, I, I was, you know, out of shape and I, I hadn't been in that environment for so long. And that, like that, that just broke me. I mean, like I was, I was much happier to be out with the guys and that helped with, with my mental health to be able to be out with the guys and, and to do all the things that I love. But in the back of my head, I almost had like this, this little nagging voice going, you know, yeah, you're playing football again, but like, you suck, dude. <laughs> like, you're bad. Like, why are you always hurt? Like, why are you, why can't, you know, it's three yards. Why, why can't you make the three yard run? Why can't you do this? You know, why can't you do that? You're you're gassed at wind sprints at the end, and and you can barely hold your head up. Like you used to be able to do those with a breeze. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And that just it kept playing in the back of my head. It just kept playing and playing and playing, and that was really really hard for me because that's never been that's never been who I was. At least I didn't think it was. You know, that, that was never, I never heard that voice before, but I never heard it because I drowned it out with, with sports, you know? So it never, it never really clicked. Like I could always kind of hear the little voice going, why aren't you better? Or why are you not good enough? Why? But I was also, you know, saying, you know, it doesn't matter that I'm not good enough because I'm you know, this version of myself, I see myself like this. So to me, that's enough success. And in in hindsight, I should have gone, okay, why is there a voice in my head? I think I'm doing great. Why is there something in my head telling me that I'm not good enough? Mm -hmm. Like what's wrong? And I never noticed it. So it's almost like you're, um, it's like you cling to your accomplishments. You're like, well, see, I got this, I got this trophy. I did, I did good last game. So, uh, you're like, there's like an internal battle where you're like yeah. pro- proving yourself that you are, um, that you are good, but you yeah. didn't question why the voice was there in the first place. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and again, I mean, but I was, I was a young kid. I didn't, don't expect younger me to have known to, Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, maybe you should check up on this. Like most people don't have that, you know, everyone has that, that voice in their head that says, you know, you should be better do better but it's my voice was why are you so terrible Mm -hmm. and then you know when i when when things were going really well when things were all my way when things were perfect and happy and and life was good you know uh, i i'd be telling i wouldn't be telling that voice you know no 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 i'm great i'd be telling that voice you know like other people are telling me that i'm great because i won this award because my teammates think I'm this big brutish figure that, you know, knocks everyone down on the ice. And like my teammates keep telling me that I'm decent. So piss off. And it wasn't, again, like I wish I would have realized it, but it wasn't me telling me that I'm good enough. It was other people telling me that I was good enough. And I, I kind of just went with that. I was like, okay, these people think I'm good enough to deal. And that's what I took. And I never looked at myself and went, you are good enough. I just went, they said that I am, so I must be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, depending on the pains of others. Yeah, just, yeah. Which, which, was, which was detrimental. And it was, it was bad. And I mean, when, uh, when my grade 12 year finished, I, re- I really should have looked into what was going on a little bit more but i didn't because the next three years were really hard for me that's when it went from a nagging voice going you're not good enough to missing work because i couldn't get up and look at myself in the mirror to go to work because i didn't like who i was it was, you know, like I went to UNB for a year and I didn't finish my year mm-hmm. because I just 
decided one day that I wasn't good enough for university. I wasn't good enough for class. I wasn't good enough for the friends that I had. And I didn't like myself. I didn't like anything about what was going on. my And I just stopped. And I still didn't pay any mind to it. I just went, oh, university's not for me. I'm going to move on, whatever, it's fine. And then I went to college. Same thing happened. Went to NBCC in, in Moncton, the community college. And I went, you know, I'm going to go take, um, it was electrical engineering. I'm going to go do that. Halfway through, I dropped out. Because I kept hearing, you're not smart enough for this. You're not good enough for this. You're not smart enough. You're not, you know, I had a lot of great friends at, at the college. You, know, you guys, you don't deserve these friends. You don't deserve these things. You don't deserve to have this job. And it just kept on playing and playing and playing. And it, keep in mind, I was, was not also not doing very well in the classes, but that probably has to do with something, you know, something to do with the fact that some mornings I just couldn't, I just couldn't exist. And, you know, like I'd get homework and stuff. I'd go home and I'd look at it and I'd just be like, I, I just can't. I can't sit at the kitchen table tonight and work on this because I don't want to, I don't want to be me right now. And then I finally went back the last time and I actually graduated this time. I went to, went back to college for, uh, for to be a mechanic. And that was that was a really safe place for me because I've always liked cars. Always, you know, I worked at a tire shop for a little while, so I had prior knowledge and that was a really safe place. And I kind of felt safe. You know, I had a, I had a, I had a a beautiful, fantastic girlfriend at the time. She was, she was phenomenal. She was, you know, everything I could have, I could have wanted. And she was great. She was wonderful. My current girlfriend's great too. Just in case, in case she see, in case she sees this, because yeah. I'll get in trouble. Yeah, not talking uh, up the ex or anything. <laughs> no, no, but but like, funny. but but really though, she she was she was really supportive. Yeah, uh, she knew about. I, I I had gone to the doctor before, to uh, to my family doctor to talk about my mental health, because it hadn't really occurred to me until after that second time I dropped out from from school, and. Um, you know, I told her, told my girlfriend at the time that, you know, here's, here's the deal. This is what I'm going through right now. I'm trying to get things sorted. And she was, she was great. But for some reason, with all these great things that were happening in my life, all these fan, I'm, I'm, I like school. I like my friends at school. I like my girlfriend. I like, you know, my, my my relationship with my parents is, has always been really pretty good, but like it was really good. Like every, everything was fine. Everything was good. And then it was probably just after March break of the year I was doing the mechanics course and I broke up with my girlfriend for, for seemingly no reason. Like, and like I, I just broke up with her. I'm like, I, I, I don't, I don't want this anymore. I don't, I don't want you. I don't want, I don't want this anymore. And like, I just, I knew why, but it didn't make sense to me. Like I'd, I'd hit a low point for seemingly very little reason. And Every day I'd, I'd go to school and I'd text her in the morning and say, hey, you know, good morning. Hope you're having a good day. Hope your school's going well. You know, I'll see you after school. And I, I'd send that text. And I'd be sitting in the car waiting to go into college. And I, I'd send that text. And then I'd immediately think to myself, wouldn't it be nice if she had someone that was better for her? And then I'd walk into school. And I'd think about it probably about until lunch or so, like just replaying in the back of my head and replaying and replaying. And I'm like, why, why, why am I thinking? And then, you know, around about midday I'd go, why, like, why am I thinking this? I'm a, I'm a fairly decent person. <laughs> like I'd like to think, you know, I'm, I'm a good guy. Why am I thinking this? But every morning for a little while, I just keep replaying it and replaying it. And then, 
one day after after school she said hey like are you coming to pick me up today like because I, I was really late like i was really really late picking her up and it's because i was just out driving i pulled over and into a like into a gas station i said uh i think we need to talk i i don't want to do this anymore and i broke up with her not only did i break up with her but i broke up with her through text so when you were driving around were, were you um have any sort of thoughts like i'm not good enough kind of thing well yeah that's like that's what it was right like i i drove out to her house and drove past her house and like i almost stopped i almost stopped to go in and and get her and and then we would have i was supposed to make dinner that night or whatever and i didn't stop because something told me you're not good enough to have this life you're not good enough for whatever this is this relationship this this life this these things you do whatever it is you're you're not good enough for it and i just drove and i just kept driving until she texted me and then then i broke up with her which was hilariously stupid like i i to this day like it just it doesn't make any sense it doesn't make any sense to me now at the time it, it was it was totally totally legit totally viable and then like we broke up and it was really me- really messy really really bad like i was living with a couple of my friends in a house at the time and she had stuff there and like she came up she picked it up like she you know very rightfully so was unbelievably angry and was yelling and screaming at me and and i just sat there and i was like yeah you know what you're right like she was, you know, you're a piece of shit. You're this, that, and, and she was totally, you know, um, it was the way she was feeling was completely viable. It was, it was totally understandable the way she was feeling because, like, through text, like <laughs> it was not good, it was not good on my part. And um, and she was saying these things, and I just kind of went like, "You're right. You're, you're right." I have no, I have nothing to say towards it. You're, you're just right. And then like the following week, or no, it would have been like two weeks after. Cause for a week I was, I was all right. I was fairly stable. I was upset, but fairly stable. And then we had, uh, we had, a like a, a, a practical exam. And it was a full week practical exam. And I didn't show up to school for three days. I went Monday, I went Tuesday. And Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I stayed in bed. I didn't move. I didn't eat. I didn't... I went upstairs to use the washroom. I came back downstairs. I didn't look at my phone. I didn't go on Facebook. I, you know, my 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 family tried to call me. And like... I'd only answer after like the fourth call because they're trying to figure out, you know, like, Hey, what are you doing? You know, we had plans. Are you, are you coming? And I just didn't answer. And I just, that was my, my absolute lowest point. Cause I just like, I just couldn't get out of bed. I felt like I was totally paralyzed in bed. Like most times I wouldn't like, I'd be laying there and I'd be like, wow, my, my back's really sore. I should really roll over. And I just wouldn't, which is odd to think about. You know, you're like, you're sitting in bed and you're like, man, I, I got to roll over. And you, and you just don't, you just sit there in the dark and you stare at the same wall that you've been staring at for five hours, six hours, seven, eight and then you'd go, man, like, I really, I really gotta, like, I, I gotta, I gotta get up. And you'd go upstairs and you'd, you know, see the sun <laughs> shining through the, the window and it's a beautiful day out and you'd get a glass of water and you drink the water, put it down, you go back downstairs, you lay in bed. And it was brutal. And I stayed in bed for three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I was up. And I didn't move very far. I went to the couch in the den outside the room and played video games. And then Sunday I was I was starting to come back around again. 
I felt a little bit better. You know, I wasn't... Things weren't as hazy. Like, they weren't as... as uh, things seemed more fluid. They seemed more real Sunday. And after that, you know, I had, to, I had to go back to school Monday and explain to my teacher why I missed three days of a, of a practical exam. And I lied. I said I had, you know, a really bad migraine and just forgot to message him, which totally isn't true. Yeah. But I also wasn't sure how – he's a really, really nice guy. Like all the, all the instructors there are really, really, really great people, and I'm sure you would have understood, but I didn't know how he was going to react to me going – I couldn't get out of bed because my mind wouldn't let me. Yeah. I, just, I wasn't sure how he was going to react to that. So I, I lied. And, you know, I, I took the punishment. He took 15% off my grade or something. Cause like I, I did the practical exam and did fairly well on it, but you know, I just took it in stride and just kind of forgot about it. And I mean, I finished my, my, uh, my degree and I went and I worked at uh, at a Canadian tire down the street from where I lived and things were were all right you know I was I wasn't doing anything I wasn't going to the gym anymore I was I was gross I you know I'm working on car parts I'm greasy and stuff and I'd shower every three days four days like I just didn't care at all you know i just i got up i wore the same jeans pretty much every day just black jeans because you, you couldn't see grease stains on black jeans and i just like I, I went to work and i went home and then i laid in bed and watched stuff on my you know on my phone or played some video games i went to bed then yep next morning repeat for quite a while and so did you say you uh went to see a family doctor or did you not do that yet yeah no i I'd, I'd gone to see a family doctor my mom actually actually told me that i should we uh, her and i had had a, had a pretty good conversation one night about like just life just you know sitting my mom was sitting on the couch watching watch tv and i came upstairs and I just sat and we just talked and we went to a family my, my family doctor and i was way too embarrassed to explain anything that was going on because even though it had kind of been tarnished my idea of myself was I was still this impenetrable enforcer this guy that you know like <laughs> you can ask my friends from high school I told I would tell everybody like something something would happen something sad would happen and I'd go I don't cry I haven't cried I'd, I'd tell people I haven't cried since you know since I was six I don't cry you know, I, I split my knee open and chipped a part of my kneecap. I don't cry. You know, like I, I, I don't cry. And that was wrong. So yeah, right, I was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So like I was super embarrassed. So my mom told the family doctor what was going on. And she, she didn't outright say she's, she wasn't like, oh yeah, you're depressed. Because I don't think that's how that works. <laughs> that's not how that works. But she did say, like, this sounds like depression. That's what this sounds like. And I had actually gone in high school. Uh, I had gone to see the guidance counselor a number of times for the way I was feeling. And that, that didn't, really, didn't really help. Um, I, I was more so told just kind of like your life's great. What's, what are you complaining about? Like you're obsessed, ex accepted university. You're, you know, you got good friends, a good family. Like what's, what's the problem? And that made it, it wasn't her fault. She's really, she's a really nice woman. I, yeah, I yeah. all, anytime I go back home and like my sister's in high school now. So sometimes I'll go in and see the teachers. I always say hi and have a conversation with her. Cause she's a really, really nice woman. It's just at the time that's not, what you needed what i what i needed to hear because instead of me going you're right i just you know i need to i need to be better that voice in the back of my head went yeah you're a real piece of shit cuz your life is great mm -hmm. and you still feel like this mm -hmm. so that didn't really so she didn't really 
and make an analysis on a deep level of what's really going on with you as far as mental health. Yeah. It was just more of a, yeah. Well, and, and again, like I, I, I think, I think the way she was trying to do, looking back now, I understand what she was trying to do because like I'd gone in for a, a couple times at lunches and stuff and I, I told her about myself and I told her, you know, what, who Ryan Dempsey is. And based on that assessment, she said, Ryan Dempsey, the enforcer, the guy who, you know, this is, this is who he is. This is who he has built. He has built himself up to be. Um, the way I should approach this is to, is to issue him a challenge because I'm all about challenges. I love challenges. I, I want to be better. And, and she issued me a challenge. It was just the wrong challenge. Right. And that's not her fault. Yeah. She, right. you know, high school guidance counselor, she, you know, mostly dealing with how do I get you into university? What courses do you need to take type deal? And she's a lovely woman. She tried really hard to, to help me. She just, yeah. it, it very well could have worked. You know, I could have, I could have gone out of that meeting and gone, she's friggin' right. I got to figure out my stuff so I can, I can be better because I should be better. Mm hmm. But it just wasn't the case. Yeah. Because I'd already put so much on myself of me telling myself that I should be better because everything's great. So then having someone, you know, that is in that position tell me that, I was like, oh, man. That little voice that's been telling me to get up. He's right. Like, it's right. And that wasn't, that wasn't what I needed to hear at the time. That's, that's for sure. That was, that was hard. But anyways, um, so did you, whatever happened with the doctor? Did you end up, um, I had gone back a couple times and, uh, I'd gone, I started to get like my mom was with me the first couple times. And then I started to go alone to see her and she's, she's a really, really nice woman. She eventually diagnosed me as depressive with high anxiety levels. Yeah. And she said, you know, I have medication for you that will help. And it probably would have. But it made me feel crazy. There's that stigma that, you know, people have around mental health, which my doctor didn't have. She thought it was totally viable to, you know, that mental health was is totally viable. You need you need to get your mental health right. She was she was fantastic and she was really trying to help me. And she was trying to get me to see like a, a a psychiatrist. She was trying to get me the help that I needed. But I saw that little bottle of pills and I went, Those are crazy people pills. I'm not crazy. I'm fine. I'm not crazy. I'm fine. I'm not crazy. And the more I told myself that, the more that little voice kinda said maybe you are crazy mm -hmm. and and i didn't take anything for years i didn't take anything because i just thought it would tell people no one would no one would have ever known i was taking anything but to me that that little voice in my head said you're gonna walk down that hall and people are gonna know people are gonna know you're crazy with the that that's hard. uh sorry no go ahead off, but that's a lot of the reason why i made this podcast right there i think is just i mean the stigma um because i mean you know it's real it happens you, you're explaining it in your story um people think it um and it sounds like you took them later on, um, but you know I'm I'm sure they would have helped at the time. And it's just it's unfortunate that that's the mindset that that happens in society. And yeah, it's sad. It's 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 re it's really crazy to me. And and you know I I wish younger me would have known that that it was okay. It's not that I didn't know that it was okay. It just I didn't feel it. Again, it's it comes back to that way that I perceived myself and thought that, you know, that little voice telling me, oh, you're crazy. I know I'm not crazy. It, they, these are things that happen. People go through this. Mm -hmm, exactly, Some people yeah. need help. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, like, it's it's hard 
to change these mindsets. Like I've always said, and it's unfortunate, but like I've always said that, um, like if your stomach hurts, can't go to work, your boss says, deal. All right. Call into your boss and go, I can't get out of my own head this morning. I can't come to work. I'm going to say a good amount of bosses would, would understand with, with, you know, people knowing a little bit more, but there's still, I'm going to say the majority of bosses that would just, you know, tell you to put your big boy pants on and, and come to work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because it's not viewed yet, which is why I I love you doing this podcast. I'm super, super happy that I got to, I got to come share my side of stuff. Um, but like that, that's not right. Mm-hmm. that it has to be viewed as something legitimate mm-hmm. because you know there's there, there's many days where i've i've called into work and gone oh, i'm sick i've got a headache i've got you know i was up all night i was i was sick whatever but the reality is, is i just can't get out of bed i can't i can't put it through my head to tell the rest of me to get up and get to work and that almost makes it worse because then you're thinking all day, wow, I really, I should really be at work. I'm not really sick. Exactly. And it's also like a secret thing, you know, like yeah. I got to keep this secret. And it kind of plays in your mind as like, you know, you said, oh, I'm crazy. You know, that's, that's the stigma right there. It's like, I need to hide this because I can't even call into work and say, it's not, you know, it's not a viable thing to yeah. call into work and, and Absolutely. say. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. No, it's, I mean, just. It, it's really frustrating. Like it, it, It's really, really frustrating. And, you know, I, like, I've got friends and stuff that I know just from being with them long enough that they have high anxiety levels. Mm-hmm. And things really stress them out. Like, like really high anxiety levels. Yeah. I know a lot of guys with like really, really high anxiety levels. You can see it in their hands when they twitch when something's bothering them. You can see it in their neck when they twitch. And... I know that uh, for a fact that they've called it into work because there's something they're so anxious about they can't they can't get in the car to go to work because they're gonna throw up, and it's disheartening to know that they have to feel like they have to hide that because not only is it aiding and abetting that I'm crazy, but it's making those anxiety levels skyrocket because now now you have to go into work tomorrow morning and make up a lie about what kind of illness you had. Yeah. And sometimes you have to go to the doctor and get a doctor's note for something that isn't isn't even real. Yeah. You got to live out the lie. You got you, go to you've got to completely live out the lie to go to the doctor's office and say, "Oh yeah, my stomach hurt today. Can you get me a doctor's note?" Well, what's wrong with your stomach? Is it something we should be looking at? And the whole time you're looking at the doctor going, "There's nothing wrong with my stomach." Yeah, I have high anxiety. I'm depressed. I I can't get to work because my mind won't let me. And you've got to continue that lie, which is just hurting you. Mm -hmm. It's it's frustrating. Yeah, hard. Yeah, yeah. I think they're well. I think it's really hard for people to understand that never been through it. Um, and I think, like from say the boss's point of view, um, if you don't get it, like there's just I almost think that you almost really understand it to the extent that you've been through it. Yeah. If that makes sense. But from a boss's point of view, you know, like we all feel like we don't want to go to work a lot. So, and I think there's an kind of an old, old way of thinking, especially with men where it's oh, yeah. like, um, the tough guy thing or the, like just pull yourself up by your bootstraps and go to work. Like, I don't want to hear your shit. Just get to work, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, and sometimes in some situations, I mean, we coach football, that shit works. And that's like th- something you need to say to a young boy. That's doesn't have a shit together. But at the same time, if it's a mental health issue, it's a completely different situation. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a, it's a health situation. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, no problem. My phone's ringing, guys. Um, it it's a hard thing to differentiate, though. Like, yeah. I'm I'm not saying that the bosses that are under that 
mindset of pull your bootstraps up and, and get to work. I'm not saying they're wrong. Yeah. I'm just saying it's it makes things exponentially worse. No, it but, does. But but it, it it it's also a fine line because I also I've worked with people that I can guarantee would take advantage of of that of of the mindset of a boss that understands. Yeah what people are going through. I know yeah. people that would take advantage of that. So yeah, yeah. it's, it's a really fine line. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a really fine line. And that's, I think that's where the problem is at some point. And I think because it's such like a, th- you know, now it's just starting to come out and we're all starting to realize, um, how important mental health is. It's, you know, it's just so new, I guess that, um, Yeah, I don't know. It, it is a fine line. It's it's just something we're going to have to con- continually work with. And I, I'm not even sure if it's ever really going to be fixed. There's always going to be some part of it, whether it's some people taking advantage of the system by claiming something that, that isn't real. Yeah. Or, uh, or, or, or I shouldn't say not real because it... I, I don't know what people go through, but there, well, you can call it like it is because I mean, people do that with other things like physical injuries, you know, they're yeah. like there's people that claim disability that aren't disabled. There's people that say, well, you can just say you're sick and you're not sick. Like we've all done that once or twice. Let's be honest. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh yeah. I got, <laughs> for I sure, got the flu, for sure. but it's not a mental health day either. It's just like, I got yeah. the flu. Yeah. No, I'm, I've, I've, I was partying last night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've all I've, done that. You know, I'm, I'm I'm really sick today. I, I've got a really bad headache. Yeah. Forget that I I downed you know half a quart of tequila last night. Yeah. But I've I've got a headache. Completely irrelevant. Yeah, completely, completely irrelevant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We've we've all been there. Yeah. But it's it really is a fine line. And yeah. and again, like I don't know I don't know how it ever it's ever going to be fixed because it, if we do if our society does start accepting um like fully mental health as as a reason as it should be for those affected by it to not go to work or to not go to school or to not do what they need to do, then we're going to raise the argument of, well, is everyone telling the truth? Yeah. Which, which is, which is a hard argument to get into. It is a hard argument to get into, but I think, uh, similarly, similarly, like you said, um, getting a doctor's note when you're sick, you know, for your stomach, it can be the same kind of thing. And I think, with mental health being on the rise the way it is and uh you know who knows there's probably a million different factors why that is technology probably being a, a big one but oh, oh yeah um you know i'm gonna maybe you need a doctor's note or maybe counseling or therapy is a much more common thing than it is right now and you get a note from your counselor saying yeah this is what and like you know a counselor is trained to look at this like from a clinical perspective, like this is what's going on. You know, you'd think that they'd be able to look through through bullshit or whatever and just like yeah. write, write a, yeah. uh, write a note if you need it kind of thing. And, um, and, and maybe that's how it has to happen. Maybe like, maybe that's, maybe that's the solution to, to say to people, you know, like if, if this is, you know, if this is the way it is, that's fine. That's cool. You know, if you have a day, take the day, like, it is what it is, but that, that note from a counselor or something like maybe, maybe that is the way I'm just saying like, there's so many hurdles mm-hmm. and it's so hard to like, I, I totally agree with you. Totally. I'm hundred percent team Maddie right now. Um, <laughs> but like, there's just so many hurdles to go through and there's so many different things that have to be adjusted and changed Yeah, and it's viable and it's reasonable and it should happen. I just don't, know if it will because even if you do have like even if that's a vibe even if let's say five years down the road let's say we've got you know mental health as a sick day that the totally viable now you just you need a note from your physician yeah or whatever there's still gonna be those bosses that say well pull your pants up and come to work yeah hopefully they die off (laughs) 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 well i mean uh, you're 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 right. Ten you're, twenty you're, years. Yeah. Well, I mean, thirty max. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> wow, that was dark. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but I'm just kidding. But um, yeah, for sure. I think like beyond that, beyond sick days, beyond stigma, I think that like similar to your problem, it's society's problem, and I think we have to get to the root of the cause of what all this mental health where it's coming from in the first place, if it's ever going to change. I mean, you can accommodate for it happening, but if you don't, yeah, if you don't, if you don't fix the problem, it'll still always be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not that it's a problem. It's just bad with words. Um, (laughs) but no, you're, you're, you're right. We've we've got to find out. It is a problem. Yeah. It is a, it is a real problem and it's, it's on the rise and, you know, we got to figure out why that is and we got to do something about it because, you know, people are killing themselves. Yeah. And like, that's the reason why I made this, um, this podcast. Um, you know, say if you didn't get help, things might've looked different. You know, I've been in dark places. People, you know, it's just scary, man. It's really, really scary. No, it's a, it, it's, it's all, it's all hard. Friggin' scary, terrifying, Whatever word you want to use, like it's there's been there's been some dark places. Mm-hmm. You know, um for a lot of people. And I don't know I don't know how we come to that determination of, you know, factors A through whatever M, because there's probably a lot of them. These factors are what are lending themselves to to these issues i i don't know how but like man would i love to see it i'd love to see that day where they say you know this is and obviously not all solutions are gonna be the same for every everyone per every person but i'd love to be able to see the day in my lifetime where they go you know um this isn't a solution but this is a widely accepted coping mechanism and we're starting to find out that this is kind of what causes these these things and now we can not only um help cope better but we can we can start with preventative measures in these areas i'd love to see that that would make that'd make my friggin millennia man like yeah. <laughs> anyways it's some crazy stuff though i think uh I think any progress and like there has been there has been progress so far and it's come a long way I um talk to people you know even from our parents generation um and they just like you know there's no one talking about mental health then so just a few generations we've come to the point where we we're talking about it a lot more so that's progress yeah, you know? the, it's it's all really good steps. We're it, we're headed in the right direction. We're we're gonna get there. I'm not necessarily sure when. Yeah, I I hope it's sooner than later. You know what I mean? But yeah, um, like I know, I know a lot of people that have had similar ways of thought and similar voices to what I've had, saying similar things, and they've dealt with stuff so much differently than mine and things that have happened similar to other people that have happened to me, um, that have handled things so much differently and gone so much different routes. There's like, there's so many possibilities to so many things and everyone has so much of a different life experience that like, I'm hopeful I'm I'm ready for for things to kick it into high gear and like you mentioned there's been so much progress in what seems like so so little time like that's only a couple you know like that's only a generation or mm-hmm. two mm-hmm. and and I'm hopeful for it it's just when you look at all of it like a little overwhelming sometimes you know like it's no, it is overwhelming. it's so much and I'm It's a very complex problem and yeah. I think a lot of it is like uh kind of rooted in our society and in our culture you know there's a lot of problems um yeah and the list is is huge 
but um you know love connection um we spend too much time at work probably um technology social media our phones we're addicted to technology our phones social media it's uh we're addicted to netflix <laughs> amen <laughs> i'm thinking that that a lot lately um how we like automatically go to like technology for entertainment and it's like throughout our entire history as humans we've went to each other for entertainment you know like we just we need that connection i think that's something that's missing you know like yeah like how often would you go watch netflix you know 300 years ago for like two (laughs) two days yeah binge watching a show man you like you like just don't turn any technology on and sit in your house and then see how long you sit in your house. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's not very long. You normally get up. Yeah. You get bored quick anyway, you know? I was, uh, I was reading a study, I think it was two years ago. Yeah, I mean, anyways, I wish I could cite it. I really wish I could cite it because now that you brought that up, I, I really wish I could, but I can't. Yeah. Um, okay. But they did a study in um, the attention sp- the they studied attention span by giving different groups of generation a book, and they had these uh, these sensors that tracked eye movement, right? And and the older generation would read the book word by word, line by line, and they would read the page or the article or whatever it was. Yeah. And then there was that would have been like like our grandparents. And then like our parents, you'd see their eye movement, they'd read like two two paragraphs and then their eyes would jump. Mm-hmm. And they'd come back to it and they'd keep reading. Then their eyes would jump. And they'd come back and they'd keep reading and their eyes would jump. Mm-hmm. And then our generation, you watch their eye eye movement and it's a sentence or two. Eyes would jump on the page. A sentence or two, eyes would jump off the page. Sentence or two, eyes would jump down the page. Like it's all over. A sentence so, or two, flip to the back of the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Done. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but but you know what I mean. Like it, th- they always come back to the same spot, and they're all reading the same book, and it's all happening at generally the same pace. But it, it it's a good indication of of um, of attention span, attention span. and. I think that has a lot to do with Netflix and your phone and your computer and, and all the social media sites because like, like Greg, what was it called? Vine. Those six second videos. Mm. I loved those. Me too. Cause I could watch like 400 in a couple of minutes and get all of this stuff. And my attention, like my attention was filled. I was happy because I got to see all these clips and all this stuff. And now I'll go on, like I'll I'm totally ready to admit it. My attention span is bad. <laughs> I'll go on YouTube and I'll start watching a video on like, you know, I, you'd mentioned earlier that w- we both coach. I'll go on and I'll look for different ways to coach and different ways to scheme and, and, and bring up stuff to, to the kids. So, so they can do better and enjoy themselves more. And I'll look and it'll be like half hour video, man. I'm not watching a half hour video where I have to pay attention for the full half hour. Yeah. yeah. Is there one that's 10 minutes? Like yeah. I can do 10 minutes. Yeah. Is there a five and a half? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is just there give is, me the cliff notes? <laughs> can, can someone just give me the, give me the bullet points and then we'll move on with our lives. Yeah. 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 But like that, like that's a really good point though, because whereas like, when when our grandparents were younger, they couldn't go and watch Netflix for two days. Mm-hmm. So they had to satisfy that attention, that human need for some attention yeah. somewhere else. So they'd go and they'd go, you know, go on the street, play ball or whatever with, with their friends, ball yeah. hockey, whatever. And that would keep their attention, but it's a long activity. If you go, like I've, I've got young cousins. And, you know, if I want, I'll be over there and I'll be like, hey, you want to go play ball? And they're like, nope, iPad, sorry, can't help you. Because, like, it doesn't interest them anymore. Yeah. And I'm a, I'm a really, really strong believer in sunlight helps mental health. 
It does, yeah. Sunlight and exercise. Helps. Yeah. Sunlight, exercise. Exercise is a huge help. But if you don't want to exercise, just go outside. Just go be in the sunlight. Vitamin D, um, my, my physician told me this. Vitamin D is a strong proponent for... Um, for uh, what was it? For equaling out the levels of uh, whatever it is in your head. Wow, I'm bad at this. For whatever it is in your head that causes dopamine or serotonin. Yes, thank you. I can't remember what one. Dopamine. It's dopamine. dopamine levels. Yeah, yeah. So vitamin D is a big contributor to that. Yeah. So if the more time you spend out in the sunlight, the more vitamin D you get. Dude, which. Man, I uh, I gotta I just gonna put a little note in here. I mean, I I went to I went on a cruise like last month, and um, yeah, man, it just like I I've noticed just in the summer too, like just going outside, being in the sun like all day. Yeah, you're like ten times more relaxed. Your body's relaxed. Your mind's relaxed. You're, yeah, you're, you know, it, it's just being outside isn't gonna fix everything. But like it's a really good place to start. Yeah. And it helps lengthen that that attention span that we're so bad at and helps with the communication that we lack and the the things that we need as human beings to you know successfully enjoy life. Mm-hmm. You know, my my almost year just kind of sitting on my couch was the angriest, the sorest, the one of the worst periods of my life, no questions asked. And if I would have known that, you know, all of this now, I could have just gone and sat out in the sun. And I'm not saying it would have made anything drastically better, but I can guarantee you, guarantee that I would not have been as angry of a person for that time if I would have just gone out and enjoyed the sunlight and relaxed the way that I think you're supposed to instead of sitting in a dark, dingy basement watching TV. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of the kids who are stuck inside playing on there, that's fine. If that's what you like, if that's what you're into, that's your thing. I get it. But take the iPad, go sit on a lawn chair somewhere, Soak in the sunlight just a little bit because that's like, that's huge. That mm-hmm. stuff is huge. Mm-hmm. So I think yeah. we definitely have to just learn how to monitor our technology time and do other things like go outside and exercise and stuff. But just monitoring our technology time is huge in general. I think like, and even I mean, people say we're bad, like our generation and like the younger kids, like you mentioned, are bad. You know, they're all addicted to it. But that being said, um, I worked at an after school program and there's no technology at this one I worked at. And like kids are still kids. Oh, you know? for sure. Yeah. Like they're playing cards. They know card games. They're like, they love playing sports. I love just playing with Lego, like doing normal things, running around, going inside, all the normal stuff. It's just you have to get them away from the technology. Yeah. At least minimize it. Um, and we need to do that, our generation, and even our parents. I mean, um, social media just came along 10 years ago. And, um, you know, no one was ready for it. Even the older people, they say we're all addicted to it. But, like, how many grandmas do you see on yeah, Facebook now? Yeah, that's true. And, uh, well, and middle-aged people, you know, and they're all addicted to it, too. They're, they... You know. Oh yeah, no, I, I, I know no a lot of people. Deal with it. I know a lot of people that you know are our parents' age that are that are really addicted to to probably way more than than some of us are. Yeah. But uh, you're you're right. Like they need to minimize that because kids still are kids. Mm-hmm. Like the the kids that that we've coached in the past, they're just kids. Yeah. They love being out on the field, yeah. throwing a football around knocking into each other yeah. getting grass stains on their on their jerseys like they love that yeah yeah it's you're you're 100 percent right we need to find a way we need to just minimize it even if it's a little bit because that's that's where we start mm-hmm. minimize it just a little bit 
get them out doing the things that that they love that they don't think that they they want to do at the time even though you get them out there for 30 seconds and it's like they're having the freaking time of their life Mm -hmm. but exactly yeah yeah yeah. i don't want to do that and then like (laughs) you get them out there and then it's like it's time to come inside no yeah 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 Yeah. um no 100 percent. i think uh yeah, everyone has to learn how to do that. I think the I think the pendulum will swing is starting to swing back. I think people should realize how bad social media in particular is for your mental health. Like especially Instagram. Um for Instagram for young girls and it's just Oh, that's brutal. It's just it's brutal and that's brutal. You know, just um Yeah. Instagram for young girls, social media for everybody. I think um boys get addicted to video games like easier than girls um at a young age but i mean um i'm sure girls do too but uh yeah we all just need to fucking just need to enjoy each other's company sometimes yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like that's that's really i mean like that's really what it comes down to is everyone just needs to and I, I hate saying it because my parents used to tell me it all the time and I'm starting to sound like them, but you just need to enjoy someone's company. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, me and my family went on a, went, a va- went on a vacation two years ago now in, in Mexico and it was a phone free vacation. That's awesome. We, we, we got to, or no, it was Florida. Sorry. It was, it was our, our trip to Florida. We got to use our phones at the end of the, we, our phones were on us, but no one was allowed any data. No one was, you know, you didn't connect to Wi-Fi. You checked it for the time. And, you know, if you want to take pictures, that's that's what the phone was there for. At night when we got home and it was, you know, 9 o'clock at night, we did Universal in Florida, which was fantastic. You know, you're, you're exhausted. It's plus 30-something. You come home, eight, 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock. You, you want to watch a, a, a show on your phone? That's okay. But we went from, you know, 9, 10 in the morning till eight nine at night with really just each other and it was honestly probably one of the best vacations it's definitely top two mm-hmm. for va- for time i've spent with my family we were we were less agitated with each other we were we were much better mood we we weren't as tired mm-hmm. when when we were out uh and like it was it was really great because like I, I've always had a really good relationship with my family, but families fight. It happens, whatever. But on that vacation, I learned things about my family that in the 20 years of, of being a part of the family, 22 year, 21 years, whatever it was that I didn't know, mm-hmm. you know, my mom and dad would tell stories about when they were kids and what they did in, the, in their, in their hometown. And, Matt, my little brother, was talking about, you know, how how his school was going and how his sports were going that I didn't always get to go see. And and my sister was the same thing. I was learning things about the family, the people that I spend, you know, my nights with. I wake up with them in the house and I was learning stuff about their daily lives that I'm that I'm involved with Yeah. on on this vacation. And it took us to vacation in Florida without phones to to get that far yeah and after the vacation i was like wow like what what in the what in the heck have i been doing that i didn't know you know these things about my family yeah they're my family yeah yeah. i I love them yeah anyways it's it it was why it was a really cool experience yeah i mean we there were there were some exceptions like my dad my dad's a lawyer in moncton so like sometimes he'd have his phone out and he'd go "I, i i really have to take this but none of us minded yeah because it was one or two events a day okay like whatever we'll just go over here for five minutes you make your call it's fine and again like you know as as much as my family like i've had a really i have a really really good family my my dad and i have had multiple incidents where we we don't see eye to eye and we we get in the heat of the moment and yelling just like every family yeah and that that vacation there there was none of that 
I didn't I didn't have the instances of, you know, I'm going to freak out at my dad or my dad's going to freak out at me for something stupid that was said because we just just enjoyed the time. It was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Do it again in a heartbeat. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's great. I think more people should do that. Oh, for sure. Should be a no technology day. It's like a holiday. That'd be a good one. Yeah. I'd sign up for that. That'd be a good one. We might we might start that. (laughs) I like it. I like it, man. Yeah. October fifth this year. (laughs) <laughs> October 5th Deal Alright yeah. I'm, I'm holding you to that Alright It's my holding you to It's that. my birthday We're gonna do it <laughs> Deal Come over to my apartment We'll just drink <laughs> Alright Yeah No need for phones You're right Um So Um Are you on The medication now Did you end up taking it Uh I did take it Uh I took it Quite late In In all of this I probably took it Oh a year and a half Two years ago now so uh i'm not on it now um i actually kind of weaned away from it when i moved to pei because my family doctors in moncton and i wasn't it wasn't as i didn't know where to go here and i've been trying to deal with everything um in a different way than medication because medication for people that are having really hard times is totally cool. I love it. But I got I kind of got to a point where I went, this is a new start for me. This is a new place. It's a new home. It's, you know, new friends, new everything. I'm going to set this by the side and have the option to go back and, and revisit this if I need it. But with all this new stuff coming in, I want to see how I do... Just, just existing you. as Ryan because I didn't have to worry about people that knew about what was going on in my life or, you know, people that I imagined in my head knew what was going on in my life because here, other than Mitchell, no one really like, you know, no one really knew me. You know, those first couple of practices, you and I got along fairly well as long, you know, as well as the other guys. But, you know, up until up until probably I finished coaching Timberwolves last year, no one really, even when I was coaching the Mariners, no one really knew who I was. I was I was that guy who's 24 and looks 40, you know, <laughs> like that came out and, and helped coach. And I, I was the guy at all the football stuff, but I, I was just Ryan. Mm-hmm. And almost that, that reboot came. I found helped a lot. Um, I still have I still have episodes. I still have days where where I'm I'm very sure my girlfriend would like to smack me. She doesn't because she's very understanding and fantastic. But I'm sure there's there's days there's days where where she just wants to smack me upside the head and call it a day. <laughs> um, Got some brownie points there. Fanta- yeah, I did. Fantastic. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave that in. <laughs> but you know you know what I mean? Like there's there's days where it's really hard. Yeah. And there's days where I go, man, I maybe I shouldn't have maybe I should have renewed that prescription. Maybe I should have kept it. You know, but after that passes, I almost think to myself that I'm happy I, I didn't have it because it it wasn't great but it's not as bad as it used to be. And I'm still trying to work things out, but I'm starting to kind of find those things that, that help me cope in a different way with what's going on. And, um, it, it makes me really proud of myself, which is something that wouldn't have happened, you know, eight years ago. That to just be proud of, of me and for what I am, I'm starting to do things that make me proud and go, okay, I'm turning the tides on this myself. I still have, everyone has bad days. Everyone has, you know, those, those instances where, where things are, are tougher than, than other days. It happens. But the fact that it makes me happier when those things pass, that I was able to 
get through it get through it and exist and not and not have to spend three days in my bed Mm -hmm. and it's not even that i'm not saying you should just push through it to push through it but it's finding those things that make you really happy and understanding that sometimes whether you like it or not you just have to do it like coaching with joe puya who's been he's been fantastic Mm -hmm. since moving here I have spent more time at his house eating cookies that his wife's made and drinking his non-alcoholic prohibition Budweiser than I care to admit. God, I love it, man. He's a great fella. Um, I want to see if he'll come on here sometime, maybe. Oh, uh, he! I'm sure he would. Yeah, I'm sure he would. Yeah. Well, he was a he was a psychologist for yeah for years. He, I'm sure he'd love to be on here. Yeah. But um, he uh, he's been great. Yeah. So there was for me too. There's uh, there's been times where I'm like, man, I could really use I could really use a pick me up. I could really use, you know, I've I've been having a really hard time. I'm in a slump. I can't get out of it. And I'll just text him, "Hey, do you want to have a football meeting?" Yeah. And we don't even have to talk about anything that's going on in my life. We sit down there, we watch, you know, uh he's he was doing uh he was teaching the quarterbacks for the Island Demons, the women's senior football team here. And um, I asked him, like, hey, can I come over and watch your quarterback videos so I can help my my girls play quarterback? And I went over and we, we didn't we didn't even really talk a whole lot. I know that's a miracle. Joe Puya talks a lot. Um, but uh, oh, sorry, um, we went over. I went over. He, he had his, his cookies and his trail mix and his Prohibition Budweiser. And we sat there and watched quarterback stuff and you know just kind of nitpicked on the the way to coach it and he we talked and by the time I got home that night I I probably like it was it was 11 o'clock at night and I was in a good enough mood from just going to see him someone that I trust and can just go over and forget everything for a minute and exist with someone that I respect so highly it, it was phenomenal like it, it completely changed my day. And that's one of the things that I do now. Another thing I do now is like um, drives for me. I used to go on drives all the time. Like I did with my ex-girlfriend. I used to go on drives when things were really bad. Well, I flipped it. Now I go on drive. Like if, if I'm having, a, if I'm in a slump, if I'm in a couple day slump, I'll just, I'll take a drive. But I won't... Instead of, and it's hard, it's hard. It took me a long time to do it, but I'll take a drive. And normally that little voice is, is telling me on that drive, cause I'm alone. I'll go on that drive and I'll literally just start listing things that I'm proud of myself for. And that really helps. And it's hard. It's really, really hard to do. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievably hard. And it took me a long time to do it to just kind of shut off everything and go on a drive and go, I'm proud. Like it was probably two weeks ago. I was, I was just, just out of it. I I was my, my, my brother suffers from, from a far worse instance of depression and anxiety than me, the poor kid. And he's, he's been doing fantastic, but he called me the other day, uh, really upset about something. So that in turn, you know, I was I wasn't having a great day, but that really brought me down because I I was trying to help him, but I I wasn't I wasn't helping the way I wanted to help because I couldn't really help myself. Yeah, well, you weren't in a good spot yourself. Yeah, and and I'll field his calls anytime, anytime. But it was just the perfect storm of of when it happened. So I went out for a drive, and I was just I was looking at the trees, and I went. You know, for a guy who had surgery three months ago, I'm doing pretty friggin' well. You know, for for a guy that's dropped out of school twice and wasn't really sure what what he's doing with his life, I'm gonna go back to UPEI. I'm gonna go be a teacher. That's what I'm gonna do with my life. I'm gonna I'm gonna spend the rest of my life helping kids be better. I'm I'm that makes me happy. That makes me happy for me. You know, I I uh, I kept driving. And I'm like, you know. I did really good work with the U with the U sixteen tackle team the other day. I did good work, not because someone else told me I did good work, but I did good work because I believe I did good work. And by the end of the drive, I got back in my driveway, 
And I just kind of, it almost, it honest to God felt like there was something taken off of my shoulders. There was, there was this weight when I left that was whole, literally holding me down. And by the time I was back, I was all right again. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't perfect, but I was smiling. I, I was in a much better, much better mood. You know, I went downstairs and, and uh, Lexi, my girlfriend and I watched, watched a movie together. Like it was just, and again, it's hard to do. And sometimes I go for that drive and sometimes it doesn't work the way I want it to work, but it helps. And, you know, like, um, I've been doing this for a long time. I never, I actually never realized I was doing it. My mother always used to say that I was, I was the terrible 13s. When I was 13, I was, a, I was an, I was an asshole. I was, you so know, was I. Pre- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> glad it's not just me. I'm happy. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. And my mom always used to tell me, she goes, uh, I'd get in these, in these funks and these moods or I'm just angry all the time. And I never realized I'd do it. I never realized why it worked, but my mom kind of knew. And I think it's, it's something that she, she may have done herself, but I'd go take a shower. It could be two o'clock in the afternoon on summer break. You know, I'd go take a shower, which, which seems like the, the weirdest thing, but it's almost like it would wash away whatever's going on you know i'd go i'd i'd feel better because sometimes when you get in those funks you don't always shower the right amount of days you should yeah you'd get in there i'd grab a shower i'd come out i put on you know new clean clothes that i liked and i'd feel a little less heavy yeah. Like something almost washed away and I feel like I'm a new person. Yeah. And I never realized that was why it made me feel better. But it just always kind of did. Like I was 13. I didn't yeah. I didn't know. I just figured, you know, mom's a jerk cuz she's not letting me go out with the boys. You know, dad's <laughs> dad's a jerk cuz he won't 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 take me to do this cuz uh-huh. cuz I'm, you know, I'm the center of reality. Yeah. I'm 13. Yeah. These people don't understand me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna drape my hair over one eye and go and listen yeah. to sad music because yeah. no one understands me. No one gets. It. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it. Uh, it sounds like too maybe that um, like the shower similar to maybe the drive, and uh, could be some like reflective slash meditation time to yourself. Yeah, where you could kind of. Uh, just kind of get away from it. Just get away from everything and reflect and then come back and you kind of... Yeah, you, you kind of figure yourself out in, in that short that short time. Yeah. But that's but that's hard to do, though. Because mm-hmm. there, there was a lot of times where I'd, I'd go for that drive to to try to separate myself from whatever, whatever it was and I'd come back worse. Mm-hmm. But over the years, I've kind of figured out how to warp that into into what it is now and my drives are always good drives well, not all, almost only 95 percent of the time they're they're good drives that's good man. so that's i mean like that's it was hard for a while and it's still hard but i'm in a much better place now than i was when i was you know grades 10 through my second attempt at at post-secondary education you know and it's uh i hope that other people that are going through similar things can find those things that work for them because i like for me there's literally nothing better in the world than coming home after a day where i forced myself to go to work because I would, because I was scared to miss the work because of the way I felt in my head, and I was anxious about it, so I forced myself to work, which means 
my mind was going all the time, which tensed my body. My whole body sore. My neck sore. I, you know, I feel like a bag of crap. And there's nothing better at the end of the day than just before I go home, going on a 15-minute drive and just listening to the music, enjoying, you know, doing that same thing of for three and a half months out of surgery, I'm doing really well, you know, for dropping out of school twice, going back to UPEI and I'm going to, I'm going to freaking kill it this time. I guarantee it. That stuff. Like, I really hope that other people find that stuff that are going through things that affect that are affecting their mental health. Because I don't know where I'd be or what I'd be doing if I hadn't been told to or kind of figure it out on my own, those little, the things that make me happy like that. Because I, I don't know where I'd, I don't know if I'd be here, to, to put it bluntly, if there wasn't those people in my corner, like my mom, to kind of help me and show me things that make all this easier in you know layman's terms because i don't think any of it's easy but Mm -hmm. coping mechanisms yeah that's super awesome man and that's like a really good it's a really good message um yeah that What I do is uh, every day I take my dogs for a walk um, and like getting out of nature. And like I've done that ever since uh, my girlfriend my girlfriend died. I've, I've walked, you know, call it a hike or a walk for at least an hour every day. And that's what I do before I do anything else. I just go <clears throat> for an hour or three and that's like my meditation time slash um working through the noise of my mind and uh yeah i i think that's really important and it's um that's really good for you man like that's going for those walks and stuff like i'm i'm happy you have something like that that's <clears throat> what brings you to that pl- to that better place by the end of it mm. like because that's like that's frank i wish i could walk for an hour a day like mm. you know i'm i'm happy for you because mm-hmm. that that to me like that's awesome mm-hmm. that that's fulfilling all the requirements in my mind of what constitutes you know getting in that better place you mm. you're exercise you're in the sunlight you know you're with nothing makes me happier than dogs so i mean <laughs> you know being out with dogs is one of those things and you're you're given your time you know your time to reflect and and that's awesome i i think that's great man yeah oh uh, yeah yeah it's good i was blessed with like a really energetic dog too uh i have two now but i only had one uh i just got the other one like last year and he was so energetic like he had to go every fucking day it didn't matter if i wanted to go <laughs> it's like we're yeah. fucking going like he'd bark at me yeah. and we'd have to go and he just he runs like he'll, he'll he'd stay out there all day, so I was I was blessed in that way because he got me out there and uh, it helped me every day for sure. Um, that's great, man. That's great. I love it. Yeah. Um. Uh, well, really inspiring stuff, man, and and a great message. And uh, thank you so much for sharing your story and being here, man. I appreciate oh, it. Thanks. Thanks for help, having me, man. I just love to be able to talk about this stuff. This is this is really good. Good stuff you're doing, man. I mean, I was I was talking to a couple guys at work today about, you know, telling them that I was coming on this podcast and to check it out. And all every single one of them, even my boss, who I've been scared a couple times to call, he was like, "That's great, that's awesome, like man. that's that's phenomenal." So, I mean, I'm I'm really happy. I'm glad you had me. I I love doing it. So, thanks again, man. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Always good to see you. Great to see you, bud.